Hello, let's talk sport viewers and welcome to another World Cup game preview. This time around we'll be talking about Portugal versus Spain, one of the first big games of the colossal giants of world football coming up against each other. Of course, Spain, uh, previous World Cup winners back in 2010 and of course the European Championships as well in uh, 2012 and 2008. And of course, we know all about Portugal in the last two years as well, winning Euro 2016 in France uh, two years ago. Uh, beating Wales on the way. So uh, being the, that Wales team on the way, the England do, do, do too, too much better. Um, but less of that, the better. Um, Portugal versus Spain on the Friday night. A colossal game between two giants of football. Cristiano Ronaldo uh, versus Iniesta. I mean, where have we seen that before with Real Madrid and Barcelona? Uh, so many decent players in these two sides. And going up against each other could be either an, uh, a fantastic move for one team but a really disaster one if this game ends in one of these teams winning by a good scoreline margin um especially going up against is it iran morocco and iran in the rest of the group you know they're not exactly uh, easy pushovers they're maybe weak, weaker teams than what portugal and spain have to offer but certainly could be a, a tough test for either one of these sides um portugal with ronaldo of course uh, got the European Championship in the bag. Now he's looking for the World Cup. Um, but what can he offer, really? For what can this, what, what can the rest of this Portuguese team offer in the World Cup this summer? Because you know it seems like if you took Ronaldo out of that squad, they might not do well at all. I mean, if you look compare it to the Spain squad, they're, they're full in depth, but Portugal not so much. I mean, what do you think? Um, I think Portugal. I think that there's a lot of very talented players there. They're, they're kind of a team that are primed for, for counter-attacking football. Um, you have, say, Cedric as right back. You'd have Rafael Guerrero uh, at Borussia Dortmund as left back. Both uh, Guerrero, especially, is, is essentially a winger who would be playing left back. Mo uh, Cedric gets up and up and down. And so I, they're prime for counter-attacking football, and they have a solid base with someone like William Carvalho, who will just sit um, probably alongside Adrian Silva. Jao Moutinho is a bit of a playmaker. Ricardo Caresma is always a, a little bit of a loose cannon that can win you a game can be an absolute disgrace for a player at times. So that there are there's there's more to them than just Ronaldo, but obviously you look at Portugal, you, you first thing you see is Cristiano Ronaldo, you see goals, you see Ballon d'Ors, you see La Ligas, you see Premier League titles, you see Champions Leagues, you see the European Championship winner. There's uh, you could, there's a, an argument you can make for him being the, the greatest footballer of all time. I, I me personally I don't think that, but that's he's in that conversation, he's that good. So yeah, of course you're gonna look at Ronaldo, but I think there's there's a lot more to this Portugal team than just uh, just C R seven. And certainly with the Spanish team, there's a lot more to them than what Iniesta has to offer. This may be his last World Cup, so they'll be playing more for him. But if you just look at the Spanish team and people like uh, Alonso and Fabregas and Morata, all the players for Chelsea, you know, they haven't had a great season. But you would think that potentially, you know, if they were playing for England, they would easily walk into that England side. But they're not in this Spanish team. Uh, they still got the likes of Isco and Diego Costa that can still make a mark. And Sergio Ramos, we saw what he could do um, in more ways than one for Liverpool fans. But... Look at the Spanish team. It's not really much changed from what they've have been done, do, been able to do in previous years in international tournaments. You know, the structure, the main structure of it hasn't really changed. Just an interlude of players coming in and out. Um, for example, David Villa being placed by Diego Costa, same kind of brute kind of striker really coming into the team. It's a like for like change, and they've been able to consistently stay at the top of their game in terms of international tournaments, barring Euro 2016. Um, but how how do you expect Spain to do really do in this tournament? Do you think they could potentially go on to yeah. a semi final performance then? Yeah. Um well I um when I looked at what the groups were, how the games were gonna go, I, I had Spain get into at least the semi finals and then I couldn't I couldn't pick. Uh, I think I had them eventually get into, against Colombia in the semi finals. I think Colombia are gonna have a great tournament. Um which obviously that means they're clearly gonna go out in the group stages. <laughs> um but Jinx that now. Yeah, totally. I, I think the I, I think Spain have got a very good chance. Um I it, it's you, you talked about it then about how this this the core of this team or at least the fundamentals in terms of how they play football has been around for for over a decade now it's it is it's continuity even if the, the different players go they, they there's just that style to the international football that they have um so i think yeah spain will do very well um and you said it's an embarrassment of riches when people like uh, like ses fabregas and and uh, Marx alonso alvaro morata great player but awful second half of the season so you can understand why he's not there but the, the, you have players of this quality not making the squad um, and it's it's it is Iniesta's swan song in a way but there's there's such a new generation coming through players like Saul um, at Atletico Madrid who's a fantastic player um, Thiago who you think would could well come in as that creative force after Iniesta you, you've got 
if you've got Marcos Asensio, um, you've got Isco. It's uh, there's just uh, even the the players have got the squad. It's just ridiculous. So I think they'll do very well. Um, I think the Portugal game will be interesting to see how how Sergio Ramos plays against Cristiano. Is in do, certainly got inside knowledge on him, hasn't he? Exactly, but I, I mean, even in terms of we know what Ramos is is one of the, the best defenders in the world, but he's also a thoroughly nasty person. <laughs> I think Joe would certainly say different yeah. words to describe him. But um, how, how do you think this game is going to unfold? Then, what do you see from Portugal? What do you see from Spain? Opening game, a point to prove for either one of these sides to potentially have the form to go on and potentially win the tournament. How do you think it's going to unfold? Um, I, I think it's going to be a high scoring high scoring draw. Um, I'm thinking maybe two all. I think Spain will probably dominate. I, I just I think there's something in it for Portugal. Um, even uh, kind of the last ten minutes, I think Portugal nicks something. I think it'll be a draw. But then on the flip side, I could easily see Ramos straight away targeting his Real Madrid teammate Cristiano Ronaldo, taking him out as he did to Mo Salah in the Champions League final. And it's like, w- would he do that? You wouldn't rule it against him, even though they're they're supposedly great pals. And that their club mates, they've won it all together. That Real Madrid team, as much as they have some people who aren't the nicest of players, there is a unity. But you still wouldn't put it, put, it, put it past Ramos to purposely take out Ronaldo in the first 10 minutes of that game. I mean, you wouldn't certainly put it past Ronaldo to try and find a, a mental edge against oh, yeah. his uh, teammate either. That's, Remember, that's, that's why they're top players. Yeah. That, that's exactly why they're top players. They they, they take any advantage that they um, that they that they can to to get one up on their opposition. That's why they are why they are. Uh, that's why why. These players are in demand. These players are winning players. They're winning mentality. Every team who's been successful over the past God knows how many decades, whether it's club level or it's international, you've always got to have those type of players. You've gone for a high-scoring draw. I'm going to go for a Portugal win. I think the expectation really on this Spanish team, they're so young um, still, but they've got the quality. Um, but I think... With this knockback from Portugal, I think they could still easily go on and qualify for the knockout stages. So I don't think it'll be too much for them. Whereas Portugal, this is a must-win game for them. Because if the mentality starts to drop off a little bit, I think they could easily lose a point or two against Morocco. And then uh, goodness knows what they could do potentially against Iran in the last game with the type of form that they're in. So for me, I think Portugal will win this game. It's going to be a close one, I think. Two goals to one. Uh, but what is your own predictions? Let us know in the comments box below. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe for more Let's Talk Sport content. I'm sure you see, we should see you all very soon.